Good day, brothers and sisters. Once again, the nightly presentation in uh, East African time is here with us. And uh, today we are going to look at uh, day three again. We are going through the presentations. We are going through the presentations. And uh, just want to quickly go to uh, the presentation of tonight and uh, remember we are doing uh, a response on the bible study lessons of 2019 in our camp meeting the attack on the doctrine of godhead which actually means the attack on the doctrine of trinity a document prepared by pastor jeremy mwenda marambi of central kenya conference the uh, document that is being used officially in the camp meetings and so we are looking at the truth that has been revealed in the Bible and what the pastor has put out there and we pray that um, uh, 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 mm -hmm. the truth shall be known and the truth shall be make, uh, make us free on we are on day three of uh, his presentation and uh, on day three we split it into two because um, uh, there was the session of the intercession where actually he says that Romans 8.26, because it says that the Holy Spirit does intercession, then we have God the Holy Spirit. Then there was some important issue that he touched on uh, on day three, which I want us to delve in it fully. And this is, this man, this man who are saying that the Holy Spirit is not God, this man may appear as the ministers of righteousness, yet they are voicing the spiritualistic Babylonian doctrines of the devil. And so he says that whoever denies the Holy Spirit, being God the Holy Spirit, then is espousing and voicing the spiritualistic Babylonian doctrines of the devils. And so we want to see what are the doctrines of the devil. And the people who believe that the Father, there is one God the Father, his son Jesus Christ, and they are omnipresent, the Holy Spirit, are they the one espousing the Babylonian doctrines or are the people who believe that there is one God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the ones who are espousing Babylonian doctrines? So we are on day three, the last segment, which says that uh, the people who deny God the Holy Spirit are espousing Babylonian doctrines. And so uh, I want us to fully go into this uh, presentation and uh, I hope that um, you will follow along until the end and so before that we go into the word of God and look at history uh, I just want to offer a short word of prayer Heavenly Father we thank you and uh, we adore thee for giving Jesus Christ the comforter the redeemer of the world and uh, giving us thy omnipresent spirit to be able to overcome sin and Lord as we look into the history and what the word of God says, may thy presence abide with us and may holy angels minister unto us in this session. For this we pray, trusting in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so um, I, I want us to tackle this thing. And uh, uh, we said that uh, we shall not be bringing in suppositions of what men say, but we shall be looking at the totality of uh, the inspiration and see the sacred history, what actually it tells us and so welcome to today's presentation the origin origins of trinity and this is being brought to you by this is officially being brought to you by uh, the gospel sounders uh and uh, the presenter today is uh, sammy wilberforce and so uh, i'm going to dwell on this the origins of the trinity is it Believing in the Father, the Son, and their omnipresent, the Holy Spirit, is it Babylonian doctrine, or is it believing God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Babylonian, uh, tri uh, the Babylonian uh, uh, doctrine? And so, let us go into this, and uh, I welcome everyone, uh, both uh, online, welcome, and uh, both in this room, that um, we may be uh, edified together. And so, the origins of... Uh, the Trinity. Revelation chapter 17 verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. So in Revelation chapter 17 verse 5, you find a woman 
and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the world what is this mystery that we are talking about what does rome say her central god is because we are seeing that uh, rome is the one depicted in the book of uh, revelation chapter 17 what is her mystery or what does rome say is her central god what is the mystery that is in the central doctrine of the war handbook for today's catholic page 16 handbook for today's catholic page 16 says the mystery of the trinity is the central doctrine of the catholic church of the catholic faith sorry upon it are based all other teachings of the church the mystery of the trinity is the central doctrine of the catholic faith upon it are based all other teachings of the church that is basically revelation chapter 17 verse, verse 5 mystery babylon the great so this is the mystery babylon the great and the central doctrine of the mystery babylon is her gods which is the trinity uh reading on in um uh, uh, in uh, alexander his uh, the two babylon uh, second american d edition and uh, herbert uh, peter's recommendation uh, uh 666 page uh, 46 and page 47 this is what we found uh, alexander hislop saying hislop believes that the religion that began at the tower of babel was actually the worship of saturn in the form of fire the sun and the serpent however saturn worship could not be done openly because of the many who still believed in the true god of Noah. So a mystery religion began at Babel where Saturn could be worshipped in secret. Now you have to understand this mystery mystery worship of uh, uh, the sun, uh, uh, of Saturn which comprised the worship of the sun and uh, which was um, uh, what did the sun represents actually Nimrod, Tammuz and Semiramis. This is the mystery that people started worshipping and uh, let us look at the Bible. Let us look at the Bible. Let us look at the Bible and what the children of Israel were doing. Uh, the book of uh, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. Quickly, let us go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter. The book of Jeremiah, chapter chapter 7. Because we have found that this mystery of worshipping the three gods was the doctrines of Babylonian, and it was the worship of Nimrod, Tammuz, and Semiramis. Look at Jeremiah, chapter 7. The children of Israel, when uh, they went into captivity, they adopted the worshipping of these gods. Jeremiah, chapter 7, are we there? Amen. Then, verse 16 says, Therefore pray not thou for these people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession for me, for I will not hear thee. The children do what? They gather wood, verse 18, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women need their dow to make cakes to the queen of where? Who is that? Semiramis, the queen of heaven. And to pour out to drink offering unto other gods that they may provoke me to what? To anger. So the children of God, when they went to Babylon, they started worshipping the gods of Babylon. And it was sun worship comprised of Nimrod, Tammuz, and Semiramis. And so the children of Israel now have left worshipping the true God. They have started worshipping other gods. And one of the gods is the queen of heaven, which represented Semiramis. And then go to, still in the book of Jeremiah, go forward. Uh, is it, uh, chapter 44, look at chapter 44. Look at chapter 4, 44, what they are doing.
chapter 44. If you reach there, let me hear you, amen. Verse 15, are we there? 44, 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto who? Other gods and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt in Pathros under Jeremiah, saying, And for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not do what? Hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatever thing go, that thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, and pour out drink offering unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes, in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had, for then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and so no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wandered all things, and have been consumed by the sword, and by famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven, and poured out drink offering unto her, did we make her cake to worship her and pour out bring offering unto her without our men. So the women were worshiping Semiramis and the queen of heaven and the husbands were approving of it. And they were claiming that this brought them blessings. Now look at what the men were doing. The children and the mothers were worshiping the queen of heaven. And look at what the men are doing. Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. Are we together? Viola, you have something? You are wondering? <laughs> Go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. I want you to see now what the women were doing. And it was the, the, the men. And it is not just mere men who are doing this. They were sons of the priests. And some of them the priests. Are you in Ezekiel chapter 8? Verses 11. When you reach there, say Amen. And there stood before me how many men? Seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, of the leadership of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan. This is the son of a priest. Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan. With every man his sender in his, and a thick cloud of incense went up. So incense represent prayers. The book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 8 and the book of Revelation the book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 8, Revelation 8, 3. And uh, continued on. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancient of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his Im imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord forsaketh the earth. He said also unto me, Do what? Turn thee yet, verse 13 again, and thou shalt see what? Abomination that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord, Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there was there sat women weeping for who? Tammuz. So they had been worshipping Semiramis, and now they are worshipping who? Tammuz. Continued on. Verse 15. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see great abomination than this. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple, the Lord between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men, that is twenty-five, with their back towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward where? The east, and they worship what? The sun toward the east. So whom were they worshipping? The Trinitarian God of Nimrod, the sun, and Tammuz, and Semiramis. Yes, and so Alexander Hislop says this in history. Hislop believes that the religion that began at the Tower of Babel was actually the worship of Satan in the form of fire, the sun, and the serpent. However, Satan worship could not be done openly because of the many who still believed in the true God of Noah. So a mystery religion at Babel where Satan could be worshipped in secret. And the children of Israel entered into this. That was the ancient Israel entering in the worship of, of a Trinitarian God of Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Continued on. Uh, Saturn worship is sun worship. The, so we found that the Babylonian doctrine is not the belief of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but the belief of a Trinitarian God. And uh, that was composed of Nimrod, Tammuz, and Semiramis. In Egypt, it was Osiris, Horus, and Isis. In Greece, it was Zeus, Apollo, and Athena. 
In India, it was Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And in Rome, it was Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. So the Trinitarian god of Rome is Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. This is the mystery religion that you find in Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And this is what the children of God in the modern Adventism, Adventism has adopted a Trinitarian God whom they do not know of, a mystery religion. Sun worship. And so, three became the most universal number of date in the Babylonian worship of Trinity. Sun worship is one of the most primitive form of religion, and early man sometimes distinguished between rising, midday, and setting sun. The Egyptians, for example, divided the sun god into three deities, Horus, the rising of the sun, Ra or Re, midday sun, and Osiris, all setting sun. And this is from Egyptian deities, New International Encyclopedia, New York Dodd, 1917, volume 7, page uh, 529. And uh, so here is our representation. Uh, I wish we were just at the screen so that uh, we may be able to see it, but if you are comfortable wherever you are, be comfortable. There is no problem. But uh, uh, there's images that I'm projecting so that... Um, other people may see and also we may see. So this was the representation of the worship of the sun, the moon and the stars, and the worship of the Nimrod, Tammuz, and Samiramis. This was the sun worship that it was adopted in Babylon. And uh, when it is brought together, that is what it is. And that is what we found in our books. And so uh, continued on. This is the representation. These are the pictures. And uh, have you ever seen this in the pictures of our books? Then what does the Lord say? Is it in the book of Numbers chapter 13? Let us, or let us go there. The book of Numbers, if uh, it's not 13, then I'll give you the verse. Numbers 33. Numbers 33, not Numbers 30, 13. Numbers 33. When you reach there, let me hear Amen. I want to travel with you. 33. Are we in verse 52? I'll wait on you. Numbers 33. Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their what? Pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite and quite pluck down all their hard places. So this is the images that they used to illustrate their gods and they are Trinitarian God, and this is what you find that it appears on our books. The two Babylon by Alexander Hislop, or the purple worship proved to be the worship of Nimrod and his wife and their son, Tammuz. In the unit of that one only God of the Babylonian, there were three persons, and to symbolize that doctrine of the Trinity, they employed as the discoveries of Lyad prove the equilateral triangle, just as it is well known, the Romish church does it this day. And so this is the equilateral triangle that they developed. This is the Tower of Babel. This is how it was built. And uh, this is what we have adopted in our church as a symbol of the Lord we believe. And uh, this triangle was of equilateral triangle, which had the 60 degrees on every uh, its corner. And this is the representation of those triangles that uh, you see in different publications. So our Sunday visitor says this. The official title of the purpose is Vicarious Philae Dei, or Vicar of the Son of God, which adds up to 666 and this was a symbol of trinity actually in the babylonian uh, worship babylonian worship of 666 uh, these are the symbol the three faces of the sun god symbol is commonly known as triketra and so you can see them this is how they are presented and you will and you, you will be astonished to find that this is also found in new king, uh, on uh, new king james version of the bible which is something which is uh, amazing you, you wonder how it came to appear there on the Bible. This this is their images, which the Lord says we should destroy. On the cups of Babylon, uh, we can full-size uh, chalices, goblet, four styles, and six colors available at uh, uh, $20 each. We have the triketra, which represents the mystery Babylon, and it is mystery belief, and their cups are even having the symbols of the Babylonian gods. Harper's Encyclopedia of Mystical and Paranormal Experience page. 594 says, symbols are important to all esoteric teachings. What does it mean by esoteric teachings? The teachings within the circle. Like we can have, 
what the gospel sounders teachings, the inner circle, that are not shared in the outside. It is only known by the members inside. The, the teachings that go to the old people are called um, exoteric teachings, but the inner circle is esoteric teachings, for they contain secret wisdom accessible only to the initiated, those inside. So these symbols reveals information. If they want to know each other when they are at a place, like um, Jesuits can be gathered in a place and the multitude are there and all people are there, but how do they know each other that this is a Jesuit? They have symbols on their clothes, so they check themselves and they are able to know that this is a Jesuit, this is a Freemason, this is not a Freemason. And they can know even the, the, the level of education that you are having. When you reach a certain... Uh, a certain uh, level, the symbols that they have, there's a way they greet each other. So if a Jesuit uh, actually just greets you, you can know which level of education you are, you have reached, or if you are a, 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 a Jesuit or you are not a Jesuit. So symbols reveal so much. And so these are the things that were found in their books. The worship of nature in ancient Babylon, the sun was worshipped from immemorial antiquity as um, one of their gods. In Assyria, they worship the Triketra, or the sun, the moon, and uh, uh, the sun and the moon and the stars. And in India, we have the representations there. In India, there are, they are in Egypt, we have these representations. And so, as uh, Pastor Marambi says that um, the People who believe in the Father, the Son, and their spirit, and they do not believe that there is God, the Holy Spirit, are teaching Babylonian doctrines. Actually, we find that Trinity is the Babylonian doctrines, and in it is the mystery of all mysteries embodied in it, which actually you cannot understand. And as Adventists and as Bible readers in Numbers chapter 33, verses 52, we have been told that we should destroy the pictures that are used to be depict these gods of Babylon, but you find that these are the pictures that we are using on our publication. Numbers 33, 52, we read, it says, Then you, you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. I haven't seen us do that. And this is what I was telling you in New King James Version. We have the symbol is there, the the, the triketra, the symbol of Trinity. So you can understand now where the King James, New King James Version is coming from. And uh, when you look at New King James Version, there are some verses which have been altered to mean something which is not there in the original. We can tackle the Bible's letter and where they come from and the, way, the, the reason why they, they, they are out there. And uh, continue on. The symbols are everywhere in the places actually where they worship this Trinitarian God, in the cathedral, church of the Holy Trinity, Sueva, Sunday services, we have all there. All these symbols are everywhere, and we are told that we should be destroying them. Even in, the, in their posters, in their church benches, you can see the symbol of the Trinity, the God they worship, the sun, and the moon, Moson. And uh, in Roman depictions, we have all over in their buildings, you can see them in the middle. You have, can see them in the wall hangings. They are all over these symbols of Trinity. Now, here is a question that uh, I want us to... Uh, uh, this is a, a question and answer sheet that uh, comes from Catholic Catechism, abridged by the Right Reverend John Dubois, Bishop of New York, page 5. It asks, has God anybody? Answer, no. God has nobody. He is a pure spirit. Question. Are there more gods than one? Answer, no, there is but one God. Now, th this is this to you, it will seem interesting. Let us start again. Question, has God anybody? Answer, no, God has nobody. He is a pure spirit. Question, are there more gods than one? Answer, no, there is but one God. Question, are there more persons than one God? Yes, in God there are three persons. Now, this is what we call confusion because above here said there is no uh, there are no more than one God. Question, because he has been asked, are there more persons than one in God? Yes, in God there are three persons. Question, which are they? Answer, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. 
Uh, they are not three gods. No, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all but one and the same God. This is what we call confusion, the mystery Babylon, and it is confusing. You know, Babylon is confusion. It comes from the word Babel, which means confusion. And this is Catholic Catechism. And how do they illustrate this? Athanasian Creed, New Catechism, page 67 and 68 says, Now, this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God in the Trinity, and the Trinity is unity without either confusing the persons or dividing the substance. For the person of the Father is one, the Son is another, the Holy Spirit is another, but the Godhead of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one, their glory equal, their majesty co-eternal. And so there is only one substance that has divided this to be three gods. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Uh, it says, the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in himself. It is therefore the source of all other mysteries of faith. The light that enlightens them. It is the most fundamental and essential teaching in the hierarchy of the truth of faith. This is uh, what the Catechism says. And it goes ahead and says in Handbook for Today's Catholic, page 16, the mystery of the Trinity is the central doctrine of the Catholic faith. Upon it are based all the other teachings of the church. These are the doctrines of Babylon, is it? Rome is Babylon, is it? He's saying, Pastor is saying that those who believe that there is the God who is the Father and He has a Son and they have their omnipresent spirit, they are believing in doctrines of Babylon. But we are seeing that the belief of Trinity is the, actually the belief of the Babylonian doctrines. And why do they believe in Trinity? That will be a good question to them. Catholic reason for keeping Sunday. Because it is a day dedicated by the apostles to the honor of the Most Holy Trinity. So Sunday is kept in honor of Trinity. And so, no wonder you can be a Seventh-day Sunday keeper at the same time. How? In believing the Trinity. So we went through this. And... Uh, this is, they say, they, it is their central doctrine. And then you come in, uh, by the way, when, I, I don't think that uh, we can find pure math in Seventh-day Adventism. Because you look at the fundamental belief number two, it says one plus one plus one is equals one. Now you do this in school, and if you were to get an A, what do you get? A Z. Because simply one plus one plus one, unless un unless maths has changed. I don't know. In our days, one plus one plus one is equals to three. But this is a mystery religion, which actually even the maths itself cannot add unto it. Uh, this is a mystery religion. This is the Seventh day Adventist and their beliefs. And uh, in one of the uh, books of the Seventh-day Adventism, the Trinity, page 273, it says, The oneness in nature and character of the three persons of the Godhead raises the very useful question of prayer, praise, and worship. But what about direct prayer to the Holy Spirit? While we have no clear example of or direct command to pray to the Spirit in Scripture, doing so does have, in principle, some implicit biblical support. It only seems logical that God's people can pray directly to and worship the Holy Spirit. So this is a man, a renowned man, a professor, saying that although the Bible does not say you worship the Holy Spirit, there is no problem because numerous implications are in the Bible that you can worship the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ was departing, what did he tell his disciples in John chapter 14 and 16? You will pray to my Father in my name, not that you will pray to the Holy Spirit. There is no single quote or Bible verse that says that you shall worship the Holy Spirit. No, 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 and no. Adventism beliefs have changed over. And uh, one of uh, uh, our um, writers commending says, this is William G. Johnson in Adventist Review, January 6, 1994, page 10. He says, Adventist beliefs have changed over the years under the impact of present truth. 
Most startling is the teaching regarding Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Many of the pioneers, including James White, Jane Andrews, Uriah Smith, and J.H. Wagoner, held to an Aryan or semi-Aryan view. That is the Son at some point in time before the creation of our world was generated by the Father. The Trinitarian understanding of God, now part of our fundamental beliefs, was not generally held by the early Adventists. Even today, a few do not subscribe to it, and yes, we do not sub subscribe to this uh, mysterious religion. With It is mystery religion. Uh, God. Our religion will be changed. The Omega will be of more startling nature. That is what is written in uh, 1SM 197 and 204. And so, you remember in the books of in the book of First Kings, chapter 18, Elijah came unto the people and asked them, How long halt ye between two opinions? And we need Elijahs today who will... And what were the children of God doing when uh, Elijah came unto the scene? They were worshipping Baal, foreign gods. And we need Elijahs in this time, the last Elijah, to come unto the people and ask them, How long halt ye between two opinions? Would you stand with Elijah if he was here today? We, we are told that we have the Father, Jesus Christ, the, and the uh, Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, the beneficence is from the Father through the Son to us, and it goes back in that title, that is, Desire of Ages. And thus, through Christ, the circuit of beneficence is complete, representing the character of the great giver, the law of life. Look at um, our statement beliefs or our fundamental principle post 1872 that there is one God, a personal spiritual being, the creator of all things, omnipotent, omniscient, and eternal, infinite in wisdom, holiness, justice, goodness, truth, and mercy, unchangeable, and everywhere present by his representative, the Holy Spirit. This is what the pioneers believe that there is one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Eternal Father, the one by whom he created all things and by whom they do consist a uh, distinct persons there is a personal god the father and there is a personal christ the son and we have their omnipresence holy spirit actually ministering to us fundamental principles taught and practiced by the seventh day adventist steam press of the seventh day adventist publishing association battle creek michigan 1872 that we have the father the son and their spirit the, this fundamental belief that started in 1872 will last until 1931, 16 years after the death of E.G. White. But when the pioneers of the truth passed off the scene, then we see these changes coming to take place. And uh, the Lord said unto Moses in Deuteronomy 31, 16, Thou shalt sleep with, their, with thy fathers, and these people will rise up and go are warring after gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. So God tells Moses that when he sleeps, they will change their gods, and they will go after other gods. The same thing is uh, given to Ejiwat that after uh, he rests, many changes would take place. So, uh, I, I want to look at something which the spirit of prophecy uh, actually says concerning this Deuteronomy 31, 16. Deuteronomy 31, 16. It should be in PP. Uh, bear with me for a moment so that uh, I may give you this. This is important. You have to add on Deuteronomy. Uh, this is um, Okay, I, I have it here. Let me try and uh, 
do a projection then let me try and do a projection what Saturn has been trying to do in uh, our churches what Saturn has tried to do with the Israelites and uh, what he will try to do with us just a minute Satan Oh no Because uh, here we are dealing with the uh, end time issues In this end time issues, we will have many things to compart. Many things to compart. Yes, PP 689, 689 paragraph 1. I'm sorry for taking that long, but uh, it is worth it. Uh, we are told that uh, Deuteronomy 1.16, And the Lord said, and to Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and these people will rise up and go warring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Now, uh, now look at uh, what it says in PP 689.1. PP 6. 89.1 pp 689.1 okay here it is now i hope the people can see it on the screen it says listen to this saturn was determined to keep his hold on the land of Canaan. And when it was made, the habitation of the children of Israel and the law of God was made the law of the land, he hated Israel with a cruel and malignant hatred and plotted their destruction. Through the agency of evil spirits, strange gods were introduced, and because of transgression, the chosen people were finally scattered from the land of promise. This history Satan is striving to repeat in our day. God is leading his people out from the abominations of the world that they may keep his law. And because of this, the rage of the accuser of our brethren knows no bounds. The devil is come down unto you having a great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The antitypical land of promise is just before us. And Satan is determined to destroy the people of God and cut them off from their inheritance. The admonition, watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation, Mark 14, 38, was never more needed than now. The word of the Lord to ancient Israel is addressed also to his people in this age. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. So, when Canaan was said that it will be the promised land, Satan introduced strange gods so that when the children of Israel ended there and started espousing these gods, they will be scattered all over uh, from the land. And he has introduced at the borders, he says that at the borders of the promised uh, and typical promised land, he will introduce strange gods so that the children of God may not enter. And this is what we are seeing even today happening. PP 689.1 uh, commending on the book of uh, deuteronomy continue on we see these strange gods amongst us and this cannot help us worship god in truth and in spirit in revelation chapter 14 verse 9 and 10 we are told if any man worship the beast and his image the same shall bring off the wine of the wrath of god revelation 14 9 10 
worshiping these strange gods, worshiping the image of the beast, worshiping what they believe, actually it will bring a curse unto us. There are many differences in doctrine between various mainstream Christian denominations. Let us look at them. But the doctrine of the Trinity is not one of them. So we have many doctrines among these denominations, but there is one central doctrine that unites all of them together. Let us look at them. The Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, the fundamental truth of the Orthodox Church is the faith revealed in the true God, the Holy Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And here we have Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. We teach that the one true God is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, three distinct persons but of one and the same divine essence, equal in power, equal in eternity, equal in majesty because each person possesses the one divine essence. Presbyterian Church of USA, we trust in the one triune God. Go, continued on, the eternal triune God reveals himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with distinct person, personal attributes, but without division of nature, essence, or being. This is Southern Baptist Convention. And so, uh, United Methodist Church, there is but one living and true God, everlasting without body or parts, of infinite power. You are laughing? Wisdom and goodness the maker and preserver of all things, both visible and invisible. And in unity of this Godhead, there are three persons of one substance, power and eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Christ, Holy Ghost. This is United Methodist Church. And so you find that there are different beliefs in different churches, but one that unites them is the Holy, uh, the, the Holy Trinity, the Triune God. And you come to Seventh-day Adventist, and in fundamental belief number two, 1980, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unit of three coternal persons. What the other churches believe is also what we believe, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists we believe. We don't believe, and I don't believe in that. And so, although we are different in many things, they are being united with these Babylonian doctrines uh, of Trinity. And so, more and more we are finding that the belief in the Father and in His Son and their omnipresent spirit is not a Babylonian doctrine. It is the Trinity which is a Babylonian doctrine. However, different variations that are put there, actually, this is the Babylonian doctrines. And uh, the third angel's message is equal to Elijah's message. And Elijah came unto the, all the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if who? Baal, then do what? And follow, uh, follow him. And then Baal was composed of this Trinitarian God. Uh, the worship of the Babylonian god of uh, uh, Tammuz, Semiramis, and uh, Nimrod, a Trinitarian god. And the people under him not a word. Why couldn't they under, under him a word? They knew they could not prove what they were worshipping. They were led into apostasy. And then when actually Elijah restores the true worship, what do they say? Truly the god of Israel. Now, they for they leave out Balim and they start worshiping the true God. Are we in Elijah's day? And will you stand for him? Yes, we are in Elijah's day and only a few people will stand. The original God of the Second Advent Movement, who was the original God of the Seventh Day Adventist Movement? Statement of Belief 1872. That there is one God, a personal spiritual being, the creator of all things, omnipotent, omniscient, and eternal, infinite in wisdom, Holiness, justice, goodness, truth, and mercy, unchangeable and everywhere present by his representative, the Holy Spirit. And then there is one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Eternal Father, the one by whom he created all things and by whom they do consist. And that was the belief of the Advent movement when God brought them into existence. What is the new God of the Seventh-day Adventist church today in the church? There is one God, God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are a unit of three coternal persons. This is the new God of Adventism, one God composed of three persons, and be known God. And then they go ahead and describe that the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father, but this. The Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and the Father is God. They are using the symbols of Babylonian to illustrate their God something which is actually disturbing. The Trinity, one God with three personalities, all of one identical indivisible substance continually manifested. The Father knows himself, Jesus continually begotten, 
the Father and the Son knows each other, the Holy Spirit continually proceeding. 325 AD, Council of Nicaea, Trinity established, Sunday worship devoted to Trinity. And so uh, Sunday worshiping is something that was brought in for the worshiping of Trinity. So you cannot say that you are worshiping on the right day and then you go ahead and worship actually the wrong God. In 538 AD, we have one world religion, Roman Catholicism, and then Poland Protestantism with their one God. And 1980, now the whole world is united in this ecumenical worship of this mystery God called the Trinity. SDA pioneers view of the new God. What did the pioneers have to say about uh, this mystery God? James White Review and Herald, September 12, 1854. As fundamental errors we might class with this counterfeit Sabbath, other errors which Protestants have bought, brought away from the Catholic Church, which are they, such as sprinkling for baptism, the Trinity, the consciousness of the dead and eternal life in misery. The mass who have held these fundamental errors have doubtless done in, in ignorantly. Fundamental errors, Trinity is a fundamental error. But can it be supposed that the Church of Christ will carry along with her this error still the judgment sins burst upon the world? We think not. But 127 years later, it chose to adopt this fundamental error as a fundamental belief. Brother James White says, we don't think this will ever happen, us adopting this thing. But 127 years later, in 1980, we adopt this fundamental error. Martin Luther and other reformers arose in the strength of God and with the word and spirit, made mighty strides in the Reformation. The greatest fault we find in the Reformation is what? The reformer stops doing what? Reforming. Had they gone on and onward till they had left the last vestige of purpose behind, such as natural immortality, sprinkling the Trinity, and Sunday keeping, the church would now be free from all unscriptural errors. So we stopped reforming, the reformers stopped reforming, and they retained natural immortality, sprinkling, trinity, and Sunday keeping. Had they gone on reforming, they could have done away with these unscriptural errors. And so, 1980, Catholic God appears in SDA Church. Using subtle wordings, the worship of the Catholic concept of the trinity is officially incorporated into the 27th Statement of Beliefs at the 1980 Dallas GC. One God, three persons, all of one identical substance. More evidence of the new God. 1959, Christian Belief by T.H. Jemison. Now, let us look at what the Seventh-day Adventist scholars are saying today. 1959, we find this. Teaches SDA college student the Trinity concept of God, that there is one God and the divine nature is not and cannot be divided. This is what the Roman Catholic believed in question and answer. It's an outstanding truth of the Old Testament. Which Old Testament? Professor T.H. Jemison. There's no Old Testament that says that we have one God and the divine nature is not and cannot be divided. This is a concept that is found in Babylon, not in the true church of God, not in the Old Testament. Ministry magazine goes ecumenical. Ministry magazine is sent to 37,000 non-SDA clergy representing a myriad of faith persuasions. Only 16,000 go to SDA ministers. The ministerial association is dedicated to stu stimulating supportive dialogue among denominations and what does it send out? The gospel of the Trinity. In the 27th statement, the church defined as all communities that confess Jesus and fundamental belief that in the remnant of the church, the remnant church defined as part of the universal church, and then unity in the body of Christ, the church is based on the belief in the Trinity. So they say that the unity in the body of Christ uh, is based on the belief of Trinity. This is error. This should be separating us from other churches. And so, SDA, this is the main SDA where it has reached. And yet, Pastor Marambi, in his article, accuses those who don't believe that God, the Holy Spirit, exists, espousing Babylonian doctrines. Yet, we know that those who ask, the, the evidence 
the surrounding evidence shows something else. How do you join the World Council of Churches? Belief in the Trinity is the requirement for membership. Yes. You never knew that? <laughs> that is the thing. To join the World CC, the WCC, and are we part of the WCC? Yes, we are part of the WCC. The World Council of Churches is a fellowship of churches which confess the Lord Jesus Christ as God and Savior according to the scriptures and therefore seek to fulfill together their common calling to glory. And to join it, you must believe in the glory of the one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, 1980, Ecumenism and Official SDA Belief. Belief number 14, unity in the body of Christ. And what brings about this unity? This unity has its source in the oneness of the triune God. Pope John Paul II, Ut Unim Sint. This is the hope of Christianity unity, which has it is divine source in the Trinitarian unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So for all the churches to have unity, they must believe in this one God. And uh, then we have, from 1985, we did away with the old hymnal. And now we have a new hymnal. And guess what it contains? 18 new hymns to the Trinity. Never before in SDA hymnals. And that's why Gospel Sounders has the 1941 hymnal. We have created a database of 1941 hymnal. It is available. Yes, we wanted to we spend money to bring it out. People never bought, but we are now offering it to you free. Amen? Yes, so that uh, you may sing from the original hymnal. If you want the 1941 hymnal database that is used in Easy Worship, conduct gospel sounders. Uh, it is leader, Brother Zadok, or uh, it is uh, 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 other leaders, uh, Brother Wycliffe, uh, Brother Ben, or uh, Brother Samuel Bafos, you'll be able to get your 1941 hymnal database that can be used in Easy Worship to project and to use on your computers. We are in the process of developing uh, an app that is that can be used on Android phone for the 1941 hymnal. We, we, we do not need this new hymnal that actually leads us to worship of a, a mystery God, a Trinitarian God. And so I, I won't be going through the 18 hymns that are in the that uh, are uh, in the ordinary hymnal if you need this powerpoint i'm on facebook sammy wilberforce just do this drop a message in my inbox and i'll be able to send you the presentation you go through it slowly and you follow the history so i'm not i'm going to pass this part where actually from 1985 we got 18 new hymns dedicated to the trinitarian god which were never before in the Protestant hymnal of 1941. And so I'm not. I'm going to skip this part of 18 new hymns. I'm not going to go through it. The PowerPoint is there free. Just give me a message and I'll be able to send you on your email or on Facebook. You go through this, the whole of the PowerPoint, and you'll be edified and you share with others. So I'll skip over the hymns. As you can see, it is a large amount of information. If I go through it, we'll be able to leave this place at 10 p.m. and I don't want that. Let us try to wrap this down up. George Knight, Ministry, October 1993. Most of the founders of Seventh-day Adventism will not be able to join the church today if they had to just subscribe to the denomination fundamental beliefs. And so, most specifically, most will not be able to agree to belief number two, which deals with the doctrines of the Trinity. So, if uh, what we are saying, if the pioneers and name some of them, James White, Jane Andrews, Joseph Bates, Father Hiram Edison, and uh, Logboro, and uh, who else? There's uh, a name I'm um, forgetting. Uh, I said Joseph Bates. Another one? Yeah, Jane, uh, uh, what? S. N. Haskell, huh? 
they they will be able they will be this fellowship you, you understand what now this is going into this man who walked with god and had visions and dreams and they were about to be translated in 1888 1892 they will be this fellowship today if they came into adventist church they will be called offshoots they will be called heretics they will be called troublers of israel and they will be told the ship is going through but without you this is the seventh day adventism of today most startling is this fundamental belief number 2 1999 Polish SDA and Catholic agreement the SDA church in its teaching and service cultivates the most important principles of catholic faith especially the belief in the blessed trinity this is startling admissions 2000 our awesome god book by uh, Reinda Brunsma it says it is a basic christian doctrine that god is a trinity of three persons modes of eternal manifestation having one substance essence or being it took the adventist church until far into 19th century to agree that the doctrine of the trinity was indeed biblical i don't know which version of bible because we have searched it throughout the week we have not seen it and so he continues saying it it took the adventist church until far into the 19th century to agree that the doctrine of the trinity was indeed biblical and belonged among the fundamental adventist belief no we don't have fundamental beliefs in seventh day adventism at large that says that god is a trinity neither is it found in the bible this is a babylonian teaching the people who are led into all system of truth when they entered into the most holy place rejected it god of the sanctuary revealed to them the truth november 2006 william johnson presentation to presbyterian church in ecumenical dialogue Number 1 As we look over the 28 statements of Adventist doctrine we are led to three conclusions Adventists believe in the Trinity agrees with the orthodox Christian understanding Trinity illustrated in SDA Bible study handbook and this is the illustration of the Catholic Church actually From 2006 Sabbath school quarterly this is what we find in the Holy Spirit lesson study adult sabbath school bible study guide april may and uh, june of 2006 the triune god there is one god father son and holy spirit a unity of three co-eternal persons in other words adventists along with millions of other christians believe in the triune nature of god that is there is one god who exists as three persons startling admissions and they go ahead in this lesson study and say how better can we illustrate this what analogies such as three pronged fork can help someone understand the idea of how one god can be composed of three equal persons and they give there we have the three pronged fork Th- these are babylonian symbols remember from 2008 catholic anders atco catholic anders atco seventh day adventist Catholic Church says Seventh Day Adventists agree with many Catholic doctrines. Now this is the Catholic Church saying Catholic Church says Seventh Day Adventists agree with many Catholic doctrines. Which one is they including the Trinity? You will hear many people in Seventh Day Adventists saying no we don't believe in the Trinity like Catholic believe but the Catholic is saying that Seventh Day Adventists officially agree with many Catholic doctrines including the Trinity. whichever way you can dice it slice it and cut it it is still the same this babylonian concept june 2010 is signs of the times although not itself a biblical term the trinity has been found a convenient term for the one god self revealed in scripture as father son and holy spirit the signs of the time june 2010 page 52 now signs of the time used to be one of our best literature magazine outside there and uh, the book of ecclesiastes says that it is foolish to wish that uh, the former days will come back but how i wish the bible could come could allow me to say that jane andrews will rise today and read such a things in signs of the time the guy will say that let me go back to the grave because there is nothing good to read in the signs of the time these days 
when you look at Review and Herald, where Uriah Smith was one of the editors and uh, Wagoner and others, you find really inconsistent things. The triune God, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unit of three coeternal persons, the glimpse of our God. This is Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide, January, February, March 2012. And so we... The doctrine of the Trinity that God is one and composed of three persons is crucial. This is what they say in this lesson study. But we are finding it is as crucial as being the mystery Babylon of Revelation chapter 17 verse 5. Some early Adventists struggle with the doctrine of the Trinity. Today the church has taken a firm stand on the doctrine. How does this change over time reveal to us the unfolding nature of truth? It is not the unfolding nature of truth, but it is a continued in omega of apostasy. That is what I'll say. Kung Hans, Christianity, Essence, History, and Future, page 95. Throughout the New Testament, while there is belief in God the Father, in Jesus the Son, and in God's Holy Spirit, there is no doctrine of one God in three persons, modes of being no doctrine of triune God or Trinity. Throughout New Testament, while there is a belief in God the Father, in Jesus the Son, and in God's Holy Spirit, there is no doctrine of one God in three persons modes no doctrine of triune god in trinity and i can say amen to that kung hans was right and so we were raised a people with a firm platform of three angels messages fear god and give him glory but we have forgotten who this god is and so we cannot give glory to him worship him that made heaven and earth we don't know yet who made the heaven and earth because we have adopted this uh, uh, fundamental beliefs instead of fundamental principles which actually, uh, and something interesting in our fundamental principles of 1872, you don't hear that anyone was disfellowshipped for believing in Trinity or believing in the non-Trinitarian form of God. People were in the church and you don't hear any disfellowship of such a people. But the, the high-handed power of the Seventh-day Adventists has taken the authority to disfellowship people on what they believe about their God. This, this, this is, has gone beyond what should be. How can we proclaim the three angels' message with the wrong God? Stay on the platform. That is what we are told. I saw a company who stood well guarded and firm, giving no countenance to those who would unsettle the established faith of the body. And so uh, there should be no unsettling of the body of church in what is the truth and what God has revealed in his word. Let us wrap this one up. God looked upon them with approbation, those who gave no countenance to unsettle the established faith. God will see them through uh, this troubled world. And so we have been given three angels messages which we have to uh, preach unto the world. In uh, the word to the little flock, page 11, the third angels message was, and still is a warning to the saints to hold fast and not go back and receive the marks which the virgin band got rid of during the second angel's cry. These churches were announced Babylon because of their beliefs and the rejection of the three angels' messages, but again we go back and espouse what made them to be Babylon. It is strange we call the other churches Babylon because of the doctrines that we rejected then go back to believe in their doctrines. And when somebody says the church is a sister to Babylon and the prophet says so, you hear an uproar amongst the people. Lastly, Elijah stands up and asks, how long holds he between two opinions? If God be God, do what? Follow him. And if Baal, then do what? Follow him. It was only when these Babylonian gods were uprooted from Israel that the rain fell. You understand that? With this, Elijah came to Ahab and told him, You have sold yourself and your wife Jezebel to serving these things. But at my word, it will not rain. And then when he comes at Mount Carmel, he says, O God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hear me. And then, when he restores the true worship of the God of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob, the rain comes down. I believe the Lord is looking for a people who will restore the true worship in Israel and then the latter rain will fall. Closing on, and this is what Jeremiah saw, Jeremiah chapter 3, as we close and pray, in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 3, Therefore the showers have been withheld, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hadest a war's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. And so, it doesn't matter how many prayer meetings we will have in our church, there will be no rain. It says in Jeremiah 3, 3, that it has been withheld because of the following after this Balim gods. And Elijah has to come and contend with the people, restore the true worship, and then the latter rain will fall. So who will you worship? The God that cannot bring rain or the God that can bring rain? The Trinitarian God, the Babylon mystery, or the God that is revealed in the Bible? I'd like to appeal to Pastor Marambi, if he gets this video, reconsider what you have put out there. You are free to conduct gospel sounders and our members or our officials so that um, we are not against the church. We will never be against the church. What we want is truth. We can have dialogue. If you agree with it, we study the Bible in the spirit of prophecy. And uh, we have nothing against the whole Seventh-day Adventism movement. We want to do the work together and finish up the work, but we cannot unite in uh, worshipping the Babylonian gods, not understanding what the church is, and continuing in this false education, the Greek philosophy, and all these things that are involved in uh, false worship. So, God be with you, Pastor, and uh, I hope the material will get to you, and the Lord will guide you in all truth. Time, it is never late to recount what we have done. A true believer in the word of God, a person who is seeking to enter heaven, is not ashamed when he recounts a false doctrine that he has. And so we don't claim to be the arbiters of truth that we have never claimed. We are not infallible. We are able to sit down and investigate the scripture and spirit of prophecy and where we find we are wrong on this issue. And if you are able to show us, then we shall recant what we believe on the, on the doctrine of God, and we shall be able to have fellowship with you. But otherwise, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son through his Spirit. May the Lord bless us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this evening, and we want to thank you for thy word which is true. And we pray that, Lord, you may guide us into all truth that we may not wander away from uh, uh, thy path. Uh, you say in Jeremiah chapter 6 that uh, seek ye the old path and follow it. Some people are saying we will not follow it, but Lord, we want thy grace to follow it. Lord, we do not claim infallibility, but we claim, Lord, we desire to know the truth and follow it. And so help us, O oh Lord, in these end times when there is so much confusion. They will always prevail in our lives. In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Uh, God bless you, and uh, be free to conduct uh, gospel sounders. You can conduct uh, Brother Zadok on uh, 0722-878683 for the material, or uh, conduct me, 0721-627-977, or write to rekindling the reformation at gospelsounders.org, uh, and we shall be able to answer your email. Above all, we endeavor to seek the truth and follow it without fighting anyone uh, because we know that um, a force is the last resort of every false religion. We don't force anyone to believe anything. We give the scriptures and the inspiration the way it is and uh, we urge the people to follow it and uh, I know the grace of God is uh, able to guide us in all things. We don't convict people. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts. Our work is to be vessels that can be used in the sanctuary. We are a people, uh, instruments still being worked on by Jesus Christ, and we desire just to be Christians as you desire to be Christians. And so uh, God be with you and uh, guide you as uh, you prepare for the final events which are happening so rapidly. We are told that uh, the final event will be a rapid one. God willing, we shall be able to cover some little bit of prophecy on Sabbath. So be there, be tuned that uh, we may see where we are and where we are headed. Otherwise, wherever you are, 
God bless you.